<laughs> Beloved, good morning. Pastor Jay here, lead pastor of our congregation, calling in for Broxbury. Uh, see so many people. Uh, it is a great day to be alive, to be in the land of the living. If you are glad to be in the house of the Lord, because there is a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, as Plowman was saying, come on and put your hands together. If you know God to be a healing God, a resurrecting God, a God who uh, woke us up this morning and started us on our way, gave us, uh, maybe we don't have everything that we need, but uh, we've got a, a good portion of health. Uh, we've uh, got a right spirit uh, to be here on this Sunday, uh, which we celebrate um, with much joy. Uh, you, you know, if you've been to Union before, uh, that, that we mark time. We take the time throughout the year to uh, name and claim that which is happening in our midst. It, it's a way of that we might be grounded um, and in the Christian tradition, uh, there's a thing called liturgical time, liturgy meaning the work of the people. Um, and it's the way that the church marks uniqueness. Um, it, it's part of our calling of being set apart uh, to be in the world, but not of the world, uh, called to transform the world. Uh, so today in this liturgical year uh, is the end of it. Um, we end one season as we get ready for a new one. Next week, we begin Advent, that journey towards Christmas, where we celebrate the birth of the Christ child. So today, then, is the end of the year. Uh, it's New Year's Eve in the liturgical season uh, of the church. And what we do here is, as we anticipate the coming of the Christ child, today we mark the reign of Christ. So it's known as Christ the King Sunday. Uh, so before we reset, and prepare for Christmas, uh, we claim the truth that Christ is king, that Christ reigns even when powers and principalities uh, control the moment. Uh, we know that in due time, all things will be made new and restoration will happen. I, I say that uh, because for sure, as we gather on this Sunday, um, we gather where the verdict of, of Kyle Rittenhouse, uh, vigilante who uh, took assault rifles um, and killed people. Uh, we, we, we weren't surprised to say by the verdict, uh, but still it is disappointing that whiteness and white supremacy still reign in a way that uh, lift up a form of vigilantism uh, where innocent protesters um, are murdered in the street. And as the unfolding of the uh, trial of the killers of Ahmad Aubrey continues um, in Georgia, we gather in Boston, in Buffalo, uh, in Vermont, wherever we are holding these pains and tensions in our spirit, even as we proclaim that which is uh, coming into being. We'll use uh, some new liturgy that our own Reverend Ashley Johnson composed. Uh, and it's actually uh, a liturgy that's used uh, in churches across the United Methodist Church on today for Christ the King uh, Sunday. So we're grateful for the brilliance of uh, our own Reverend Ashley to give words uh, to that which we experience uh, in this place. So we say, even as we gather holding the multiplicities of all that is around us and within us, that during this experience of worship for the next hour or so, uh, we might lay down a burden and don't let anybody turn us around because indeed uh, we are Union Church family. If you are glad to be part of Union Church family, come on and put your hands together and bless God. One of the special things that happens on this Sunday, as it's happened a few times uh, throughout the week, is that today, throughout the year, I should say, is that today is New Members Sunday. Uh, so we will welcome three new members into the household of faith following the sermon by our own student minister, Abby Leitz. Uh, so today is a great day, a great day to be alive, a great day to be at Union. Uh, if it's your first time here, your first time in a long time, or if you come every Sunday, we are glad that you are here. 
We are glad that you are here. Uh, we invite you to move as the Spirit directs. Christopher is putting in the chat a way that you might talk back to the preachers and the musicians uh, throughout the service. Uh, you can text in church. You can chat in church. Uh, there's a sermon that goes on in the chat, as I see some people have already been contributing already. Uh, so as we enter in on this wonderful uh, day, I invite Pastor Kyle to go ahead and share uh, the screen. Uh, we will, I'll offer a litany of beginning, the one that is composed by Reverend Ashley, and then I'm going to invite us all to offer the collect, the opening uh, prayer uh, that is entitled God of Resistance, God of Resistance. So here are uh, these words as penned by our own Reverend Ashley, based on the reading for today, everything speaks. I invite you to center yourself, perhaps just make sure your feet are firmly planted on the ground beneath you. Take a deep breath as you receive these words. Everything speaks. Creation speaks. Sunlight bursting forth over endless rolling hills and through windows that pay the gift forward by presenting a kaleidoscope of colors speaks of a brilliant and intense love. Silence speaks. And in moments of silent prayer, we feel a familiar and tender embrace. We can hear God in the silence. Music, the language of the atmosphere, speaks to and for the parts of us that words cannot. And people speak. Our people who come in shades that together create a handsome symphony of colors speak. God speaks through our communities. The spirit of our God speaks through us. Inspire our utterances, O oh God, and help us to receive again the wondrous gift that you have placed before us, the opportunity to listen. All God's people say, amen, as I invite you to join wherever you are. You've perhaps read the litany along, but I invite you to speak aloud this collect, a collective prayer, God of resistance. Let us pray together. God of grace, love, power, and resistance, you delivered your son into this world to testify to the truth. Mobilize us. Give us the nerve to continually take up the project of liberation like Christ the King. Give us the courage to eagerly respond to your call, to advocate for justice and peace in our communities so that the oppressed will be set free. It is because of the spirit that gives each one the sustenance needed to do this hard work we pray, amen, amen, and amen. So we sing our opening praise, ain't gonna let nobody turn us around, turn us around, turn us around. Let's make this our opening praise on this blessed Sunday morning.
if you're not gonna let anybody turn you around this morning or tomorrow morning or next Sunday, if you're never gonna let anybody get in the way, if we are gonna keep on marching, keep on talking, keep on walking up to Freedom Land and to be the people of God indeed preaching and protesting and proclaiming as God's trumpet that justice will prevail and that love and liberation are the rule of life. Come on and put your hands together and bless God on this Sunday morning. We are grateful and thankful uh, for the spirituals, for the songs of ancestors of our tradition that ground us, that inspire us, that lift us up as we open our eyes and our ears, indeed open our hearts to hear the word, word sung, and now word read from the gospel. I invite our lay leader, Ruby Blake, uh, to lift up the reading for this morning. Our reading this morning is taken from the inclusive Bible, John 18, 33 through 37. So Pilate re-entered the praetorium and summoned Jesus. Are you the king of the Jews, asked Pilate. Jesus answered, do you say this of your own accord or have others told you about me? Pilate replied, am I Jewish? It is your own people and the chief priest who hand you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my realm is not of this world. If it belonged to this world, my people would have fought to keep me out of the hands of the temple authorities. No, my realm is not of this world. Pilate said, so you are a king. Jesus replied, you say I'm a king. I was born and came into the world for one purpose to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who seeks the truth hears my voice. Truth, what is truth, Pilate replied. So ends the reading. Amen. Beloved Union, I am a so grateful. It's an honor for me to be able to introduce our preacher this morning, student minister Abby Leitz. Uh, Union is no stranger to contextual education students. Um, I did my own contextual education here, the same with uh, Reverend Kyle, Pastor Jordan, who's now in a far off land called Somerville. Um, we pride ourselves on being a teaching church, which means uh, seminary students who are getting a theological education pursuing ordination in the United Methodist Church, um, look for hospitality from local churches in Boston um, as sites of learning uh, to be able to explore their calling as pastors, um, particularly in the United Methodist Church. And Minister Abby is one who is exploring such calling. Um, and so we are so excited uh, to hear her preach for the first time in Union's pulpit on this day. Um, and so we're so grateful to have her. A little bit about Minister Abby Leitz. Uh, she previously worked as a print journalist, um, an AmeriCorps volunteer. She was a mental health professional, a secondary literature and writing teacher. Um, she also has experience as a pastor um, in Indiana. Uh, she was recently appointed um, as the uh, digital discipleship pastor. Did we ever think there would be such a thing um, last year over the pandemic? Um, and 
uh, is a, uh, a licensed pastor now through the Indiana Conference. And so we're so blessed that we get to, to borrow her here in New England. Uh, we ask that you might uh, welcome her warmly and also gas her up in the chat, uh, just as we know that you would if we were all in person um, in the sanctuary. So as we prepare for the sermon in song, uh, we ask that you might offer words of prayer and encouragement for our preacher, Minister Abby, in the chat as she uh, uh, knows that she is anointed and clothed uh, in the Spirit of God as she prepares to offer a word for us this morning. Uh, may it be so. May it be so indeed. So then, I, I, I see y'all, don't forget to give her some love. Uh, that, that is part of the record, which will hold a student minister, Abby, in this place. So then on this Christ the King Sunday, as we pray for student minister, Abby, it is appropriate then we would sing our, our hymn of preparation, our praise, Come Thou Almighty King.
Oh, good morning, Union. I don't know about you, but I'm a little out of breath from that, so I'm going to need a minute to, <laughs> to come down. That was wonderful. Thank you so much for that. That uh, just that praise moment, um, just all of us, all of you leading and all of us in our little squares. It's just so good to be with you. And I'm looking forward to, yeah, being able to, I think we've seen a lot of party in the chat today to doing that together one day. But again, good morning, Union. My name is Abby Leitz and I am the student minister, your student minister with Union this year. And it is such a a privilege and an honor and a joy just to be with you today. So thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for welcoming me in and among you. And I know that there's at least one person who's never been here before. So welcome to you. Welcome to new members as we, uh, yeah, come to the end of, of one season and, and enter into a new one. But let me just offer a word of prayer uh, for all of us and then we'll, we'll get on with it today. But Ah, still coming down from that phrase. We take a deep breath. We draw a deep breath. And we say amen. We say amen, God, for your presence, for your goodness, for your praiseworthiness that calls us to this place. Each of us here is here for, for purpose. God, you knew we would all be here today, each of us gathered we don't always know what you are doing behind the scenes, but we know that you are doing something good. And so, God, we offer ourselves to you each individually in our own places, but collectively here as the people called Christian, as the people called Union. And so we lay our hearts open before you today, God, that um, regardless of the words that come out of my mouth, you would be glorified and your truth would go forth. So we thank you for all this, God, and I ask a blessing of peace and mercy and joy on, on each of us gathered here. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, the beautiful one. Amen. <sighs> I think I'm finally catching my breath a little bit. <laughs> well, Union, as uh, your student minister uh, called to preach today, I have to say I'm a little, I'm a little flustered, even as I feel very encouraged, even as I am thrilled to be with you all today, to have the privilege of offering a word of love and of hope and of goodness to you. And God has a good word for us. But it doesn't feel neat. And it doesn't feel simple or even easy today. The world's a bit of a mess in general, I would say. And that's not anything new. But today's gospel doesn't hide that fact. It doesn't pretend things are clear and simple. Maybe you felt that too, as you received the word today that Ruby read for us. But, but I hear Jesus too. I sense the good news. I do hear truth. But it seems like in this season of uncertainty, of measuring our every move, that seems to be just one step at a time as we continue to navigate the pandemic and of even returning to in-person worship here and of every other thing that will greet us once we log off of here today. I guess I wanted as the first time I got to, to preach for you and, and, and among you, I wanted to have a cleaner, a simpler word for you. Now we have a good word. We're just gonna need to chop through some weeds together to get there today. So as Pastor Jay often says, let us go on our way. I sat down at my desk on Friday afternoon to reflect on the words that God had been giving, had been giving me uh, for this day, for all of us, uh, knowing this very moment was coming. And I felt gratitude wash over me and excitement brewing about being able to worship on this very special Sunday that we are celebrating, where we're celebrating Jesus specifically, and maybe more intentionally than probably we have since since last Easter. This is Reign of Christ Sunday, beloveds. Today, one thing is clear. It's the day when the church focuses on lifting up Jesus, on celebrating, yes, the beautiful one who is in the midst of everything, showing us how to love each other and ourselves and creation. It's the Sunday that we focus on remembering Jesus is the one who carries us when we cannot go on and commands us to rest, not just when we're burned out, but because we were made with a holy need for sacred rest. Jesus is the one who restores our feeling back to us just in time. 
just when we needed to know we are alive so we don't slip into permanent numbness. Jesus is the hope when systems all around us fail and even the best of our people let us down. The one who calls us to keep dreaming and speaking and trying. The one who meets us in our fears and the places we hurt and ache and the places where we don't yet know need a healing touch. Jesus is the one. And so this Sunday, we also remember our mission and our call in Jesus, one that would see the world transformed, made new and just and truly liberated, where captives are released, where the blind receive their sight, the poor are given that good news and the oppressed are set free. We reflect on this Sunday, a year of worship and of life together. As Pastor Jay said, this is the final Sunday in the church calendar, a New Year's Eve of sorts. And next Sunday, Union family, we begin the church year again, the new year, the first Sunday in Advent, that season of preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And yes, today is a celebration of the year past and all Jesus is and stands for and points us toward, admittedly, at least to me, this feels like a strange in-between day. If you were here last Sunday, Pastor Jay encouraged us to cling tightly to the truth that goodness comes first. It was such a joyful morning together, and I hope based on his encouragement last week, that you played last week, that you laughed. I hope you embraced music and art in some way, made space for your creative self to emerge. I hope you felt that essential goodness in and around you because in case you need another reminder, goodness comes first. Now I let myself laugh a lot this week. Not that I don't laugh, but I'm a seminarian and I have a lot of things do uh, for school coming up. So I haven't had a lot of time for, for play. So maybe that's why last Sunday stood out to me, but I tried to live into that this week. I watched some Saturday Night Live, which tends to just do the trick for me. I love to laugh. I love to laugh by myself. That's just kind of what I do. <laughs> but I told a friend um, also whose mom died this week about goodness being first. And even in the face of that unfathomable loss and pain and grief, Goodness still comes first. And I felt that so much this week, joy and goodness. But the hard realities of life that we have already mentioned in part this week have unfolded. And there are untold and, and intimate aspects of our lives where we feel that maybe in our, our work or our family relationships. And if we saw or heard the news, um, we probably saw something about these impassioned attempts that were made to move a government, to rule in favor of life over execution. Julius Jones is alive today, praise Jesus. We heard about a Colorado city reaching a $15 million settlement, thank you God, with a family of Elijah McLean, a 23-year-old black man murdered by police last year. But these favorable decisions hardly feel like victories in the face of injustice and white supremacy and the evils that created the need for justice in the first place. Why are we still in between the fully realized realm of God and the world and its broken ways? We see steps forward toward the reign of Jesus coming true on earth. I feel it every time I gather here. We feel the love getting a little bit more solid of a foothold. And wrongs are acknowledged and accountability makes the headlines, but it's not really what Jesus had in mind. Is it this kingdom, this realm that is not of the world? When lives are stolen, when the truth is subverted in favor of comfortable lies. So I needed that reminder that goodness comes first as I sat Friday reviewing my notes because the news literally dropped down into my field of vision on the screen, a notification announcing the then 17 year old gunman who murdered two men protesting the shooting of Jacob Blake in Wisconsin last summer had been acquitted of all criminal charges. Like a pin to the goodness comes first bubble, deflated. I clicked on the story and let myself read a little. 
This particular story was filled with a sense of struggle over right and wrong, innocent or guilty, 27 hours of deliberation for the jury. Oh my God, why do we struggle to recognize the truth? I thought, where is the release of the captives? Where is the good news for the poor? When do the captives get free? When will the blind finally see? I need today this Jesus focused Sunday because in some ways I am like Pilate from today's gospel. I find myself asking lots of questions. Now Jesus stands before Pilate, a man in chains, facing the man who held all the keys. Pilate's mind seems full of uncertainty, searching to make sense of what's in front of him when he's physically standing between the testimony of Jesus, the holy man in front of him, and the crowd of Jewish religious leaders gathered outside demanding Jesus's execution. Here is Pilate in between life and death, good, bad, right, wrong, and here we stand in between last Sunday's joy and focus on goodness. And next Sunday, the beginning of the Christmas season of Advent, a season where we walk through the nighttime of preparation to a morning of joy, of Emmanuel, God with us. Today, however, beloved, we are in between some of us heavy, many of us hurting, maybe all of us tired, daring to hope, maybe like Pilate, full of questions. Today is supposed to be a celebration. What is there to celebrate here? Can we celebrate Jesus in chains answering questions that seem to have obvious answers? Friends, I think that's the thing. We can, we must, because the reign of Jesus is not powered by or functioning like the world. Perhaps, beloved, today is just a different kind of celebration. Now, the folks who choose the lectionary passages seem to have conveniently excluded verse 38. And on your screen, you saw it in parentheses, and I'm so glad that Ruby read it, um, because I was felt, uh, I felt, I felt um, moved uh, to include that verse, that verse 38, the first part of it, where Pilate says, in John chapter 18, truth, what is truth? Truth, what is truth? When we are filled and baffled by questions, by shock, or even a lack of shock at how our world understands truth, we find ourselves, and I find myself asking, like Pilate, what is truth? Well, today as we celebrate reign of Christ Sunday and as we are invited by Jesus to claim truth, I am struck by how this passage is really one of identity. And I wonder with you, what might our identity as the people of union who might our own unique identity and our identities together as people of Jesus tell us about the truth, truth that we can claim and celebrate. The pilot asked Jesus several questions about his identity, trying to get Jesus to admit one way or the other who he was. Now, if Jesus told the truth that he was the king of the Jews, could be executed for blasphemy, playing right into the hands of the law, he came to transform and transcend. If he said no, well, that would have been a life-saving lie, but a lie nonetheless. And after all, Jesus said his purpose was to testify to the truth. If this is the purpose of Jesus, beloveds, it is our purpose too. The truth, the church is called to testify to the truth of who we are. But like Pilate, we find ourselves in the messiness of the world and its trappings, sometimes wondering where is truth. For one whose position as a Roman official represented truth and justice, Pilate missed it, missed the truth as it stared him straight in the eye. 
This is not our fate. This is not our call, friends, to miss the truth. We may be flustered and frustrated and wondering how to make our way through the mess of this world, but the difference between us and Pilate is that we know we have the Spirit of God in us. We recognize the Spirit's movement by the grace of Jesus Christ, and it is for this reason we can celebrate Jesus on this reign of Christ Sunday. Remember last Sunday, goodness comes first, and part of that goodness is the truth that Jesus is with us. Jesus loves us and wants all of us, and Jesus is what is going to get us through this Mass, and not just through it, because the truth didn't come to sit here on a throne and be admired or to stay at a safe distance from the Mass. The truth came to do a new thing, the truth came to be trusted and the truth will not hide from us. The truth will do a new thing among us and in us. And the truth is we are needed. The very truth of who you are is needed to get the truth out to a world seeking for it. So as we prepare union to venture into the season of Advent, we can acknowledge it's perhaps more of the same. <laughs> another season of the unknown. We don't know exactly what God will do with us in these next four weeks of preparation. It is truly a season of the in-between, of in-between what was, but not yet to Christmas Day's joyful, overwhelming celebration. But we will show up, and we will light candles on a wreath each week to remember we are waiting for the arrival of Jesus into the messy questions of our world and into our lives anew. We trust the truth that something is waiting for us on the other side of this Advent journey. Today is Reign of Christ Sunday, beloveds. Today, we celebrate that in the midst of our uncertainties, of our questions, in this in-betweenness, we know truth because we know Jesus. And you may feel something rising up from within you in response to this truth. And I believe with all that is in me, that the world needs to hear that truth, your truth. So, so this week, Union, I invite you to ponder what truth Jesus might be revealing to you or calling out of you, and to trust it is part of the good news, the celebration of Jesus's reign coming closer because the kingdom is not of this world. And it is here, and you are called to live into it. Amen.
fair are the woodlands robed in flowers of blooming spring Jesus is fairer, Jesus is purer, He makes our sorrowing spirit sing Fair is the sunshine, fair is the moonlight, bright the sparkling stars on high. Jesus shines brighter, Jesus shines purer than all the angels in the sky. Now and forevermore be thine. Now and forevermore be thine. And I quote, because the truth didn't come here to sit on a throne and be admired or to stay at a safe distance from the mess, the truth came to do a new thing. The very truth of who you are is needed to get the truth out to a world seeking for it. Thanks be to God for student ministers who teach us a little bit more about the truth of the gospel and what a blessing it is to think about our invitation to discipleship in this way. That the very truth of who you are is needed to get the truth out to a world who is seeking for it. God knows who you are and needs you here. This, at this place called Union, our doors are always open, always open. Our physical doors might not always be open, gotta keep the church safe, but our virtual doors wide open, right? <laughs> know that if you're you're interested in formal membership or you want to know a little bit more about this community we say here at union your family available to participate in the life of our church regardless of your membership status but if you want to know a little bit more about uh, formal membership 
you're invited to uh, have a conversation uh, with our pastoral staff, a member of our pastoral staff. There's a link in the chat uh, to be able to uh, reach out for more information. Uh, please log on, uh, inquire, uh, even if you um, aren't sure where you're at. Uh, we'd love to chat with you. What's beautiful about this invitation to discipleship is that uh, folks respond to the call, respond to the invitation. And on this new member Sunday, there are three new members who will be joining our church uh, this morning. Uh, what I love is that there are, um, while all are new formal members, uh, some are, um, you know, old faces, uh, new and familiar faces, um, but all will be uh, uh, joining in full membership on this day. Um, we want to give the opportunity for you to hear a little bit about who they are, see their faces before we jump into our formal membership ritual. And so um, I've invited uh, each of them to share uh, just a minute or two, a little bit about who they are, how they found Union. And so uh, this morning we'll be welcoming uh, uh, three, uh, Regina, Solomon, and Ellen. And so I would like to uh, first invite uh, Regina uh, to go ahead and unmute and share a little bit with us about who you are and how you found <laughs> Union. Good morning, Union. Good morning, family. I found Union right here on Zoom. That's how I found Union. I was looking and Union was there and Union was so loving and welcoming that I had no choice but to give in to the love in a place that we are virtual, <laughs> but still we are with God. And I'm so grateful. Um, I'm a she. I'm also one of the L's of the LGBT, and I'm very happy about that. And the, it was the color of the heart that Union displays. I saw it on Facebook, and I said, that's the place. That's the place. And after talking to Pastor Nikki for a while, I just I felt like I had always been home. Once I, once I entered into this virtual place that we now call Union Methodist Church, knowing that I would be accepted just as I am, exactly as I am, no questions asked, I would be loved and I would be prayed over just like I should be. And I would be able to join in fellowship and worship and praise with people who are like me was what drew me. I'm 66 years old. <laughs> yes, I am. I'm married, have been for 13 years, and we have three daughters and eight grandchildren. And we're raising one. So that's who I am. I'm a woman of God. I'm a woman who is a human rights activist. And I have been the one who has been one of the ones who has been fighting for the injustice of so many people for over several decades. We won't keep talking about my age because <laughs> it doesn't matter to Jesus. This is the day of Jesus Christ. And I'm so grateful. You have no idea. I want to just go keep going on. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that I have a home a church home <laughs> where Amen. it's going to be all right because God says it's all right that we're going to be loved just the way we're supposed to and I see your faces every week smiling I want to be that person too and when Pastor Jay said last week to play and be artful be creative I did just that I did that I did that I want to be part of you because where there is God and love, that's where I want to be. Thank you so much for welcoming me. Bless it, bless it, Pastor Nikki. <laughs> Lord, I had to put, I had to pin myself up on this screen. I said, listen here, Regina, you better go ahead and preach that word. <laughs> Come on, y'all. Amen. Let's bless God. 
Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Jesus. Pastor Nikki. Look, this is I you. tried to tell you. I tried to tell you. Pastor Nikki, you over here building a church. Okay. <laughs> Let's keep moving. Let's keep moving. Uh, Regina, we are so grateful uh, Thank for you, you today. Thank yes, you, preach Regina. that word. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, by way of welcome, I'd like to invite um, Solomon uh, to uh, be spotlighted on screen as well. Uh, Solomon, as you are unmuted, I invite you to share a little bit about who you are and how you found Union. Um, yeah, thank you very much, Pastor Nikki. Hi, Union. <laughs> Um, God bless you all and God bless you Regina for your um, your touching words. I was really much touched when you were yeah, you were talking. I I could see tears um, yeah, coming down my cheeks because I I resonate with whatever you were saying and um, the truly Union Church is a home and I I, I feel that too. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm Solomon Terry Alipo, um, originally from Ghana, yeah, from Ghana, West Africa. But I am I'm currently um, yeah, studying for my Master of Theological Studies at um, Boston University School of Theology. Um, even though I am I'm, I'm currently doing my MTS program, I have requested for a switch to the MD um, yeah, program. So hoping to switch from MTS to MD. And and the good news is that I am in the Ada Evans house. Um I I first heard of um I first heard of of the Union Church from Dr. Shalin, Reverend Dr. Dr. Shalin. God bless you so much. When I was I was um, getting ready for my my yeah, my transition from Ghana to um, yeah, to Boston, and she she um, she contacted me about the uh, on the Ida Evans house, and that was um, yeah, that was one of the good things that have ever happened to me since um, I came here. I I, I I found myself in a home. So after I heard, I, I heard about um, about a union church from 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 Dr. Shalin, I began to do a little bit of research. So right from from Ghana, I I was was visiting the website of Union Church, and also um, like uh, the website and their their account on Facebook, and I found out one thing that. Um, that that fell upon my heart. Um, I have always been in love with the tenants of of the UMC since I I, I began my my program at STH. But um, seeing a couple of uh, a, a preaching sermon from the, from the Union Church, I realized that most of the sermons are are, are directed to how to build a community and also to make our world a better place. And this is something I don't find in, in the churches in Ghana, irrespective of how religious we are as African Christians. We are focused on, on, on the spirituality, but um, alienated ourselves, our preachings to how to build a community, how to make the world a better place, how to love one another. As I was said, and I so right from Ghana, I told Dr. Shalin that I would love to be a, a member of the Union Church. So I, I I came here and I had to begin the process because I really want to be with a family that loves, a family that 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 considers the order, the family that um, makes the world a better place. So I am. And focus on social justice and how the church back in Africa can make the world a better place. So I'm here 
and I really want you um, to um, to translate the tenant of um, the the Union Church and the um, and the UMC to the church of uh, to the church and the people in my country, so that we can have a change of plans and also. Um, 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 make effort to make our world a better place. Thank you very much, Union Church. Amen. Thank you, Solomon. Such a blessing uh, that God would bring you here, uh, even into our renovated parsonage, the Hilda Evans House. Uh, where you reside with other seminary students. Uh, and now you're joining as a member of Union Church. We're so grateful that you're here uh, and that uh, your ministry will bless us as well. Uh, we also uh, want to be sure to invite Ellen Casey, our third and final uh, member joining, uh, no stranger to the Union family by any means. Uh, Ellen, please uh, introduce yourself and share a little bit about uh, how you found Union. Thank you, Nikki. I um, I'm, I just want to say amen to Regina and amen to Solomon and amen to Abby. This is such a wonderful service and I too feel like I'm coming home. Uh, yeah, I um, first heard about Union a long time ago, I guess, and I somebody, when the um, pandemic started, I was having a good time going to a lot of different churches. You know, all my buddies all across. Um, I actually am a retired clergy person and I knew a lot of people preaching and I was having a great time. Then a friend of mine um, said, you know, you ought to try Union. A lot of those seminary students, she's at um, Harvard, really like it. And I said, oh, okay. Is that the one where Pastor Nikki is? Because I heard her preach once and she's amazing. So, you know, I popped on and then I found out that everybody who preaches at Union is amazing. And then I found out that the music is amazing. But most of all, I found out that the community is amazing. Like, I feel that I have found community, especially through the Bible study, that the people that I'm joining are people of my heart. And I think Amen. Pastor Nikki, Union Church family, <sighs> hmm. I, I think uh, I hear a little bit of Plamen's, uh Lord prepare me to be a sanctuary as he integrates it in, and we are a sanctuary, uh, a community um, where we are friends, colleagues on a journey. Uh, Pastor Nikki and Pastor Colin are able to join a clergy colleague and Reverend Ellen Chaplin, uh, retired and still working. Uh, in many ways, a part of our Bible study community for a long time, and now formally says yes when, like the, we're we're preparing for Advent. Our theme is is coming home, um, and already we're we're in it, uh, student minister Abby, uh, and the way in which Solomon, you say you you know flew thousands of miles and landed on foreign shores uh, and we're able to find the Hilda Evans house, uh, which has become home uh, to you, uh, Regina. Uh, and in what would you say, 66 years? Like not a day over 26, uh, you know, but like fighting for decades, but to just find a place. Okay, last, last minute, unless you may. Right just to find a place that is, we love you, not in spite of who you are, but because of who you are and all the brilliance and beauty that you are. This, uh, Pastor Nikki, we should go ahead and do the membership ritual, but I, I, I continue to give thanks for a congregation that preaches with us, uh, that these testimonies uh, are the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Pastor Nikki? As uh, we pull the slides up on the screen to begin our formal membership ritual, we want to remind all of you that this is not a ritual of membership that's just for the three who are joining here, but for all of us. Uh, membership is not just about individuals making a commitment to sort of implant themselves in a community and assimilate. Um, but for us to say we will be forever changed, knowing that these people, these testimonies are entering into this place. They will forever influence our lives and the way that we do things here, just as we will influence theirs. And so we invite you wherever you are to lean in, uh, to respond uh, as you are prompted as well, um, as we move through these vows of membership. So won't you uh, lean in with us uh, as we prepare to welcome Regina, Solomon, and Ellen into membership. So we say, uh, Regina, Solomon, Ellen, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you reject evil in all of its individual and systemic forms, repent of your sin, and accept God's power to resist injustice and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves. If you do say, I do. I do. I do. And do you choose God's abundant grace and way as revealed through Christ Jesus, the way of redeeming radical love? And will you commit to following Christ as your redeemer and living your life in the way of God's justice and mercy? If you do say, I do. I do. Yes, I do. I do. And this is for uh, the congregation. Do you all, as Christ's body, the church, do you reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? And as such, Will you continue to nurture all of these people in Christian love? If so, say, we do. You can say it out loud. You can type it in the chat. We do. We do. do. You're invited wherever you are to uh, repeat these words aloud with me to lean in, uh, to hold them in your heart. Oh, as a congregation, we say, these people matter, matter to us. To us. And, and because, and because we, know we know the God of, of abundant life, life, we will we surround, surround them, them with a community, a community of radical, of radical love, love, justice, justice and, and solidarity, solidarity that they may that they grow, may grow in, their in their trust, in their trust God of God and love, and love of all people. All people. We, will we will not cease praying for, pray them. for them that they that may be true disciples, disciples of the one, of the of one, the one who, came who came not to condemn, not to condemn this, world, this world, but, but to redeem it. it. Beautiful it is to hear the cacophony of sound as we uh, speak words of, of love over one another. Um, and as members of Christ Universal Church, will you be loyal to Christ uh, through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to hold it accountable to its ministries of love and justice for all people. And as members of this congregation called Union, uh, will you Solomon and Ellen and Regina participate in Union's ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, say, I do. I do. Yes, I do. Indeed. And now beloved members of the household of God, this place called Union, uh, we commend these persons to your love and your care. Do all in your power, we implore you, to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. God is doing something wonderful in us. So as the song is played, we invite you to offer words again of greeting to Regina, Solomon, and Ellen, the newest members of Union United Methodist Church. Come on and bless God. Yes. Wonderful in me. God is doing 
something wonderful in me. Yes. It's something awesome and incredible that only He will get the glory. God is doing something wonderful, incredible and awesome. God is doing something wonderful. Yes, indeed, we say hey, we say hallelujah. We're so grateful uh, for Ellen and Solomon and Regina and also for Thomas and Bev and the entire family. Uh, how great it is, how great it is indeed uh, that we are a family, a place called Union. Uh, we celebrate today, uh, Student Minister Abby, you are right, today is a day of celebration. Uh, so as we come to the close of the service, though we would be remiss if we didn't give you an opportunity uh, to celebrate through the giving of your gifts of your tithes and your offering. If you haven't already done so, uh, we invite you to uh, give. Go to unionboston.org forward slash give. You can te text to give. You can text to give any dollar amount, 84321. Just text the dollar amount or you can send a check. Send a check, uh, we'll receive it. We will cash it uh, because uh, the money that you give uh, is right. not just uh, you know about keeping the lights on or church building, but as the testimonies have been offered, it's about making sure that these uh, uh, buildings, the Hilda Evans House, the church building uh, might be home for all people. So uh, Union, it is time for the offering. Come on and bless God. Yeah, Plowman was playing, yes, God is real, for we can feel God in our soul. If you feel God in your soul this afternoon, we bless God and we sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow. Alleluia, alleluia. Indeed, as we come to the close of the service, realizing that, yeah, we, we run a little bit uh, late today, but I still feel no ways tired and I am grateful for the ways in which uh, uh, God speaks through us and we take the time to tarry uh, and to hang out. We want to do lift up a couple of announcements, though, however, uh, you should know that uh, Advent begins next Sunday. Uh, if you have not already prepared uh, uh, or ordered an Advent wreath, we invite you to do so. Uh, I'm Amazon is still delivering. Uh, there's lots we can say about Amazon. I think, uh, what is his name? Uh, Jeff is a poised to be the first trillionaire. Uh, but go ahead and order it on Amazon or whatever. Make it yourself. Do it yourself. Uh, so that it might be, uh, you know, I'll have mine back here somewhere. Um, that it might be part of your, um, your worship setting as we prepare uh, to journey 
from here uh, to there. So Advent is next week. Uh, we invite you to uh, prepare your home as we uh, prepare our home together. Uh, also, if you haven't already done so, we invite you to go to unionboston.org forward slash pledge. Make your pledge as we lean into financial freedom, as we expand our mission and we endow our future. Uh, 2021 has been a wonderful year despite all of its challenges. We are trusting God that 2022 will be even better. Uh, go ahead and make your uh, pledge. We're gonna keep pushing it. We, it doesn't matter if you give a dollar or a million dollars, uh, we're just inviting you to give, uh, to give up a portion of that which God has given unto you. Uh, so please go ahead and make your uh, pledge as soon as you are able, if not right now. Get your tickets for the uh, 2022 MLK Memorial Breakfast. Registration is open. We're having an in-person and online hybrid event. Join us. Uh, we are celebrating uh, Black women who are proving the dream as we move from resistance to representation and justice. Dr. Annette Gordon-Reed is our keynote historian and professor at Harvard uh, University. So we're grateful that she will be among us and that uh, Dr. Melissa Pearson, our own uh, professor at uh, uh, Northeastern University is coordinating this uh, event as we lift up and celebrate uh, the beauty and the brilliance of Black women. Finally, as we come to the close of this service, to prepare a closing litany and then a benediction from student minister Abby, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you to all those, uh, particularly to John and Ruth Jemison, Ruth Ann Brown, Helen Showard, and Reverend Dr. Charlene Zuhl uh, for making, even in the midst of this pandemic time uh, uh, where you know turkeys are not available and social distancing is still the norm, uh, that uh, our, our pantry has served over 150 families. We were able to provide gift cards and food uh, to the families, probably more than that. Um, uh, during our Thanksgiving day of sharing on this past Friday. So come on and bless God for uh, union serves, people who serve and who do not uh, take uh, uh, the challenges of this time uh, sitting down, but still continue to stand up for justice, uh, stand up for love. So receive this closing, again, written by Reverend Ashley Johnson. Be that. Beloved, be that aroma, that savory aroma that lets all know they belong. Be that soulful song that fills the room with vibrations that console and inspire. Be that cool and calming breeze that reminds others to live in peace. Be that firm ground that gives our children something solid to stand on so that they can see farther and offer always to one another the delicious kind words that add beauty and flavor to our world. What a fellowship, what a joy divine leaning on the everlasting arms. Let's make this our closing praise.
to the minister abby hello i'm here thank you um again union just thank you for this warm welcome that you have given me today welcome to our new members and uh just what a joy it's been to receive all of this welcome and warmth together and i pray that as we go this week we would celebrate even though we may be in the midst of an in-between as we head into union to know that we know the truth because we know jesus and again i invite you to listen and to ponder for the truth that jesus is revealing to you and needs you to bring forth into the world so be blessed and we will see you next week union Pastor Kyle, you can unmute the lines, greet one another, go in peace, go in love. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Be safe. Happy Thanksgiving. Have a wonderful weekend. Hello, everyone.